that's 24 inches and no I'm I've done this out of granite I've never done this out of wood and when I did it out of granite I messed like three up and I got one right so that was like 15 years ago so we'll see if I get this but I'm going to try to run a drain board down in here that's slightly sloped to see drainage in here at about sink that's wood that goes up into the bottom of our white marble sink whatever we're doing it's kind of a cool slate white marble mix so let's we'll see what we get. Can't wait to see all the woodworkers talk about my sink. Um, it's an outside, vis non-visible. So right now I'm just tacking, and then I'm gonna pull it all back apart, glue it, glue it all, and try to clamp it all back. Personally, I think we need to cut the hole out. Um, I'm probably gonna slightly undercut the drain board area, and I'm, I want to completely finish the sink hole. So that the sinkhole goes down and under, so I undermount it just like I would a normal undermount sink, if that makes sense. And everybody agrees, this is your class and your piece. I'll build this however you guys want if you want it differently, but do you want this to be centered on the sink or centered on the drain board and sink? It's easier to mount cabinets if you center it on the sink. So what, say what? Center the sink. I, I prefer, but I don't mind if you guys want me to do a different size cabinet or something. So. I'd say center the sink as well. Yeah. That way, if there's more, you can use more. That might look nice, anyways, having a drain board kind of off centered slightly. Yeah. And we might be cutting the whole thing in half and adding that other piece, anyways. So, sure. It might look nicer being slightly off centered. You might want a drain board on like the overall piece. Yeah. So an inch overhang. I want a one inch overhang, and then it's a three quarter inch yeah. base frame. Yeah. And then you want to give yourself at least a half inch. So, I don't think you should. We should have this cut any sooner than probably two and a quarter inches off, off this front here. So what I'm going to do is mark it and then bring it in the exact three quarters and take my time templating, take my time cutting. Will you make and sure that that's like pretty clean up that corner where it needs to be?
especially because we're mitering it, we don't want any high spots in the middle of product. We want it to be a really flat surface all the way across. And then I want my pattern just to pull straight over the edge at the last second. So I'm gonna foil tape this. And I, I don't, I will foil tape the bottoms, but normally I don't think you'd, you may or may not have to because I'm gonna burn like an inch off the bottom of each end so I have really squared up legs. But we'll get a really significantly flatter surface. Watch your wrinkles too. The wrinkles will really let epoxy seep down through them. So you'll have like a wrinkle in your tape from putting it on crooked. And it'll just slowly, slowly, slowly sip epoxy, seep epoxy. And pretty soon you'll have this real low spot right there in one corner. And then how much of an overlap do you do? Um, a couple, four or five inches and just make sure it's real pressed in. really bright all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, all that reflection coming back. Yep. against the edge because the pearl is not going to color block when it pours over that edge quite as much as the white will. Does that make sense? So I'd like it to not be too pearlescent right on that hard edge right as it drips over because we're going to pull this tape and let it flow over and so I'm going to make sure that the first thing it hits is that pure white. I can't get tired of my whistling. It won't stop. I keep forgetting. I keep trying to not. <laughs> You're in the zone. <laughs>
Normally I would not use a flat blade like this. I'd be careful if I did. It's very easy to accidentally swipe all the way back down to zero, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. with a straight blade. You want to get nose trial? Nah, it's just so wide. I don't have a small one. You can tell when it's going to lay down good. <laughs> oh, yeah. And every once in a while I can see that it's going to lay down really nasty. Ah, good. Yeah, you are. There we are, guys. I think that's about as much as we want to disrupt it majorly before we put the gold in, because we don't want to overly mix it once the gold's in. And I am kind of... I'm not trying to move fast, I'm trying to move consistently. Does that make sense? Sometimes people think I'm trying to trowel fast, but I'm usually actually trying to trowel very consistent, like smooth back and forth so that it'll be even thickness. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like, if you slow down, it'll chop all the way down to the base. So the speed you pull the trowel at has a whole lot more to do with how much product you're gonna move than how much you push on it, so. Maybe the clear. Yeah. My pet peeve. Not sure how I tape. I hate when I tape roll sideways with all that epoxy gets on it. Now I think I'll just use a foam roller. We'll kind of fix our whole pattern like that. I'm going to let it kind of start exothermin on me because this is very thick, um, really heavy pour. So and then I'm going to pull that tape off and let it flow over the sides and you're going to have really locked up edges, I'm hoping. So now the other thing that happens is I forget I mess something up and then they turn out horrible. So I have two possibilities. I'll try to not make it terrible for you guys. I don't like them to not perfectly straight with you, I think. Can you guys online, let me know on the live if you guys can see this very well. Sometimes the screen just doesn't show us well.
this is to make it very three-dimensional I just put a clear pour down on top and you can see the difference underneath this where I poured it really thick. You're kind of following the edge of the clear? Yeah, just try, because it looks poured, so I want to kind of disrupt it enough to where I don't see that like poured look, if that makes any sense. I hate when it looks like something you did. Nice. epoxy do its thing naturally, let the air bubbles keep coming to the top, and it'd be better instead of trying to totally torch it once so it's perfectly smooth, spend your time, torch across it once, don't burn your whites and clears, um, and then come back across it after you finish it, start back at the beginning, and all that air from that warm epoxy is going to be getting released up to the top, it'll be much smoother. That's because it's clear, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Pulling through all those striations, I love it. And I think the smartest thing to do is let it self-level and let it do its own natural thing. You know, that's... that's so we just poured it with foil tape to guarantee we'd have a really flat surface. Um, and we've let it kind of exotherm getting hot on here, so now I'm gonna... Um, so now I'm gonna, they're gonna fix the plastic so it's gonna peel off and I'm gonna pull this edge here and hopefully we'll let it flow off and it'll be moving slow enough to where it could give us a really good pattern on our edge usually. This is usually one of my favorite things to see if it's done right or we mess it up maybe, we'll see. I'll just keep feeding it to you. That's nice, how slow it's dripping there. Okay. We got it just in time. That's hot. Now I'll stop here. I'm gonna do the sink too. Um, just whatever's most comfortable. Oh, the foil tape? Yeah, I try to pull it down. to try to get color or texture anywhere. I just like here where there's surface tension. I want a little epoxy on there and I want to 
make sure to break that surface tension in there. And now that should flow. Put a little excess up there to pile right over that corner. I know it looks kind of messy, but this is probably the best way to do that. Yeah. Pop those air bubbles. Make sure it's flowing in there. Just break that surface tension. If you see surface tension and happening somewhere, you just make sure you allow it to pull up. And we'll be cutting. This is the basically the legs of the table because we are mitering this whole thing. So the bottom of this doesn't matter. I just like to practice on all my edges. And that's why I sandwiched frog tape on those layers. Oh, look at this edge. I don't have to touch. The worst thing you can do to this edge is touch it. So that's perfect already, guys. And now this. Once I break the surface tension here like that, and I won't do it on, on any of the lips that are done to where it flowed over correctly. But 